Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday. It is the first day of December, last month of the year, 2025, 11.32 a.m. California time. Uh, latest activity does show a 2.0 up into the Alaska area. Also, uh, a little swarming going on there in northern California outside of Santa Rosa. You see a pretty good cluster of activity up here. Um, just off the Rogers Creek Fault. Now, there's another segment of the Rogers Creek Fault that extends further to the east here. It's not showing up on the USGS map, but it is there. I've checked a couple different earthquake apps and fault systems here. I wish the USGS included every single fault out here, but uh, on their live uh, earthquake map here, they don't. Anyway, a swarm of activity started off with a 3.3 last night. Again, that's just to the southeast here of Santa Rosa. A couple other twos, even another three-pointer just after midnight. So it's a little part of a ongoing adjustment that's trying to take place out here across the Bay Region. You know, this is not just the only swarm area that we've seen here in the last week. Uh, we've had swarms down here across Pacifica, decent swarm along the Calaveras Fault here outside of Gilroy, where we've seen a number of earthquakes, including a four-pointer uh, in the last week. And then a, a more recent swarm down here. Uh, just outside of the San Juan Batista area, including the four-pointer. I think they even had two four-pointers out there. Uh, if we were to go back there a couple uh, more days from that seven-day uh, threshold that I clicked. Uh, but it's all part of uh, definitely some major pressure increasing out here around the Bay Area. Um, even this, I haven't mentioned it yet, but we had a decent swarm out there around the San Ramon area. That's just the last week we would have to go back uh, technically the last couple weeks to see that huge swarm of 168 earthquakes out there on the southern end of the Calaveras Fault where we had a number of three-pointers. You know, there's the interesting thing with all of these is that there's no uh, main quake with any of these. There may be a, you know, a little bit larger magnitude than, say, for example, some of the ones that are uh, following that that larger magnitude but there's really no main quake out here like a five pointer and then we're stirring up a bunch of threes and twos it's not it's just swarming it's a part of a, a major adjustment that's trying to take place out here and if you look at the last seven days there's been a lot a lot of swarming all across the area the san juan batista area outside of salinas uh there in pacifica all of this is encircling here the hayward fault and of course the hayward fault is uh, past. It is past its regular interval of large earthquakes. Uh, we should have seen one by now. Uh, the concerning thing here is that there's uh, definite proof that the Hayward Fault is connected to the Rogers Creek Fault here underneath this bay region, uh, which has some major, major, um, you know, it's bad news there for the Bay Area because the magnitude of an earthquake is dependent on the length of a fault system, right? Total length of the fault. So when you combine the two here, you got a fairly lengthy fault system that's capable of producing a 7.5 earthquake as a whole. Uh, even a you know 6.9 that the Hayward Fault there can produce is pretty damaging when it when you think about the highly populated area of the East Bay. It's a um, major densely populated region. You can talk about Berkeley, Oakland. All those places, major concrete jungle out there. And that's, uh, you know, a little concerning because the Hayward Fault here has the highest probability of seeing a big earthquake here in the near future. And with what's going on here in the last week, last couple weeks, you know, it's it's notable to mention uh, this amount of activity that we've been seeing. That's why I've been covering it quite a bit because it's not normal. Uh, and it's all around the Hayward Fault, which uh, before all this warming, Literally before all of the swarming that took place here on the map, and even the last 30 days, we had uh, a couple different swarms there on the Hayward Fault. Um, that was, uh, it's, I think it's been over about a month or so ago now. There's, there was a couple smaller ones here in the thir last 30 days, but we had a decent amount of swarming there on the Hayward Fault previous to, to all this current swarming. So got to watch that closely, folks. It's all part of a of a pressure increase out here across the Bay Area. These earthquakes are not relieving strain, uh, not what, you know, not even a, a little bit. It would take, uh, you know, lots and lots, like thousands and thousands of three-pointers to relieve a strain out here of a of a, a decent size event. I think it was 32,000 
three pointers to relieve a strain of a of a seven pointer. I think. I, don't quote me on that, but uh, we've checked that a number of times there. But believe me, these little quakes they do absolutely nothing for relieving the strain. Uh, that's up there, and uh, the big event not gonna. These little quakes are not gonna push off that little event or that big event. That's for sure. Uh, another 2.2 up along the Makama Fault. Watch this area closely, folks. It's been roughly around the uh, Parkfield section northward here. Uh, that includes areas around the Cascadia subduction zone as well. It's been uh, a little amplified out here in the last week or so with a number of deep earthquakes underneath Northern California. Uh, look at this one here, 17 miles deep, 36 miles deep. This one a little bit more shallower, but you can see where that strain, the, the culprit of that strain and earthquakes, the deep earthquakes, is the Cascadia subduction zone there. Uh, so we do have to watch that. Hopefully, um, let's see if... Hold on one second heard my dog bark out there hopefully sarah jumps on that and uh go see what's going on but uh, yeah a lot of deep earthquake activity out there we do have to watch that the cascadia subduction zone trimmer counts out there recently uh trimmer counts out there recently have been uh, elevated yeah trimmer counts out there have been elevated there across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. So definitely amplified and uh, the deeper earthquake activity is uh, for sure showing up there across Northern California. So uh, let's check out the Pacific Northwest here. A couple smaller quakes, 2.4 outside of Mount Rainier. That's actually uh, up in the Cascades there, a ways away from Mount Rainier. Let's go check, see what's going on out there across the uh, volcanoes for now. Mount Rainier Volcano. Let's see. Check any earthquake activity out here. Uh, where there is uh, not a whole lot showing up here right now. Just a couple smaller, very small earthquakes out there on the map. Really nothing of any major interest. Uh, we'll go check out Mount St. Helens here. I just like to double check these to make sure that there's nothing really major going on here. As uh, far as any earthquake swarming goes. Uh, not a whole lot. There's that one that happened this morning. Uh, that's just going to be the uh, 2.4. And that's in between the volcanoes there. Nothing really major going on up there for now. But uh, let's see what else we got. Nevada's been uh, kicking up a little bit. Remember this region here outside of... Uh, well, this looks like it's to the southeast of the Valmy, Nevada out here in the last couple months there was a huge earthquake swarm with no main quake looks like we're starting to get uh, some further activity out there but away from that region 3.3 and a 1.8 i know there's some mining operations out there but uh it's interesting how these swarms pop up they'll go away then we'll see nearby swarms start to show i think we're just you know starting to see and realize how much pressure is actually building up out here across the west coast you get all these uh, inland faults showing a lot of activity uh, Yellowstone National Park, not a whole lot showing up there, but we are going to go double check that and make sure that um, there's nothing major going on. There is, uh, see, there was that oddball earthquake last night from showing up on a couple different maps. I still haven't figured out where that's at, uh, and they did not include anything around that time period. There's a little three or a little point three. But that would not be in that time period there where that odd reading is. Either way, there's a handful of earthquakes, a little bit more than two, right? These guys only showing two on the map. Uh, but I see quite a bit more. Nothing big. Uh, but, there, you know, there's definitely some more activity showing up there than what's being reported. Uh, the rest of the country out there, some earthquake activity around Colorado. And, of course, the Permian Basin out there in Texas, rocking and rolling. A couple earthquakes added onto the map here in the New Madrid Seismic Zone from yesterday, 2.2 and a 1.3. That uh, brings up the total tally to about 13 earthquakes here in the last week. That's a little bit above normal in terms of the uh, weekly count. Uh, of course, New Madrid Seismic Zone there is um, a little, not a little, well, it's an intraplate boundary that's capable of producing some big-time earthquakes there. We've seen them in the past. Got to be on guard. Uh, let's see. Deep activity once again across the Tonga Trench region. 
nothing major going on across New Zealand for now. I'm kind of surprised that did not fill in. All the activity that was stirring up around it, just still keep an eye on it. It may fill in here, and eventually it will. Uh, Taiwan area southward, just a typical cluster. Got some further aftershocks up there around the Curl Kamchatka and the Aleutian Trench. Alaska region, uh, 1.8 right now. Looking a little bit more active up here today. Uh, a number of quakes are above the uh, 2.5 range, even some into the 3 area, 3 magnitude. Uh, so we'll watch that. Still waiting for some adjustment out here across the Gulf of Alaska into the Aleutian Trench right here. You can see that major subduction zone. I'm kind of watching this area back over here, just uh, about 400 kilometer long segment here. Uh, Hawaii still rock and rolling out there along the southeastern edge of the Big Island. Most of this is deep activity. This has been a, a big swarm of activity out here recently of about 100 earthquakes underneath the area of the Big Island. Something we haven't seen in the past year since the ongoing eruption there across Kilauea Volcano. You know, it's been a rinse and repeat cycle there every couple weeks where we get the uh, eruption stirring up there at that volcano. But something is changing down below, and it may take a couple weeks for us to know what that is. You know, these are pretty deep earthquakes, so it does. T it may even take a couple months before we see uh, the result of why this activity is stirring up. Uh, it could have uh, uh, something to do with maybe more further, you know, further a magma supply from this hot spot trying to come up. Um, that's a possibility, and in that case, we could see you know a uh, more drastic type of eruption there at Kilauea Volcano, maybe a continuous type, instead of this rinse and repeat cycle there. Uh, we will take a quick glance there at the Kilauea Volcano uh, site and see what we got. Um, which uh, we're waiting on episode 38, 37 happened there. Uh, just last month, the end of last month, the deformation chart here up at the summit area will tell us what's going on down below. And wow, we've actually flatlined. See, that's a little odd. See that? We've gone, uh, here's, the eru here's the eruption. Now remember, we did have a four-pointer. I think it was a mid 4.5 underneath, underneath the area. That may have stirred up whatever's going on now. Uh, and it did make an adjustment there on the inflation chart. But this is something we haven't seen uh, during this rinse and repeat cycle. It's pretty much leveled out here without even gaining a whole bunch of um, inflation. I can understand up at the top or right before the uh, eruption happens, we level off a little bit and then we peak and then we have the eruption. But this here is rather interesting. It just uh, flatlined. So we're going to have to watch that. It's a little early for that to be doing that, so I don't know if we're maybe um, going to see a stop to this rinse and repeat and then maybe down the road maybe something further happening as far as a continuous eruption, but got to watch out. I'll keep checking back on that. It's a little interesting activity there. All right, the rest of the uh, planet here. Let's see what we got going on. Yeah, typical movement out there across Indonesia, the Philippines region. Nothing big happening for now. Um, not a whole lot across this area either. Some looks, looks like a 4.9 out around the Burma area, but really nothing big. Mediterranean region, some movement outside of Turkey there, but uh, no major swarming like we had seen here in the last couple of months. That was pretty crazy. The Atlantic Ocean, quiet. Not a whole lot going on there for now. Uh, the other big story, let's check this out. There's our X flare from yesterday. That was a uh, decent X flare off of the returning sunspot up here on the northeastern limb of the sun. That's a sunspot that was out here weeks ago that produced a number of X flares, including a couple CMEs that brought the Aurora show down to some pretty low locations there uh, across the lower 48. Pretty crazy. So now it's back. It did produce that X flare. We're watching a couple different major regions here. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the current magnetogram image of the sun. This is a massive area. Um, supposedly there's two groups here, There's or there's two sunspots. That kind of looks like just one major one, but technically there's two. Um, there's the area that produced the most recent X flare. Still looks fairly complex up there. And we also have another region out here on the center uh, eastern area of the sun. So three decent sized regions coming in. Of course, this, this one here I'm watching closely. That could produce a uh, 
pretty significant X flare. It looks like it wants to, so we'll have to watch that. Um, I got my X flare thread up around 35, 40% chance or so. I do think it's a reasonable uh, forecast there because of the complexity of these sunspots and uh, just the way they're continuously flaring. 70% uh, chance there for about an M flare. No major roars there in the forecast for now, but that could definitely change with the uh, with this big, huge sunspot. That is just crazy. You know, I don't know if that's the size of the Carrington event, you know, as far as the, the coverage area. It was the Carrington event back there a long, long time ago. It was super complex, and it's just a matter of time before we get a similar event that could definitely, uh, I think, uh, could overload some systems out here. Of course, a lot of the power systems have protections in place, and uh, but yeah, who knows? It would definitely be an interesting event. If something like that happened today, but so it looks like there's three. They added a num another one here. Either way, things like this can get really interesting. They could pop off a, a a chain reaction here of of some large events. So we'll watch that area. Also, we do have coronal hole number 94 currently facing us. This is one day old. So the current image shows it directly facing us. It's a pretty massive area. It's center disk of the sun, perfectly lined up with the Earth's sun plane. It didn't happen last time, but it happened the last couple times previous to the last time. <laughs> Don't want to confuse anyone out there, but uh, where we've seen elevated earthquake activity when uh, something like this was facing us. The magnetic lines shoot out directly from the sun or the uh, coronal hole here instantly. Uh, it doesn't take days to get here. The, the high-speed solar wind stream does. Uh, but I'm not so convinced that the high-speed solar wind stream does anything uh, as far as elevating earthquake activity. It's a magnetic lines here that kind of have a uh, an effect on the planet that so you know, possibly has a, an effect in producing elevated earthquake activity. But we'll watch that. It's directly facing us um, right now. You know, we got the activity there in California stirring up. But so far, I have yet to see any um, uptick in earthquake activity. Uh, the largest was a 4.9 so far today over there around the Myanmar, Burma region. So that's actually a little low in terms of uh, the daily magnitudes out here. We should see at least a couple fives, and we don't even have that. But, hey, it's directly facing us. Uh, we could see some big earthquakes here, so just hold on. We'll, we'll definitely uh, keep an eye on it. Uh, next close approach asteroids here to the planet. This is a fairly massive one, but look, five days old. No one's uh, updating this anymore. This is all from November. What's going on there, NASA? Let's see if uh, spaceweather.com has theirs updated. It's another site you can check out there for uh, space information. That's a, just a massive sunspot area. Um, yeah, see, these are still old as well. I don't know what's going on. I mean, they have some in the future, but there's probably some that are newly discovered. Um, but yeah, this is still a lot of older information there. So we'll have to check back on that. Hopefully they get it up and running. Pretty important. We watch what's coming towards the planet. Uh, as far as weather patterns go, yes, got some cold air out there and some snow headed towards the east. Uh, West Coast, been watching this here. I'm hoping for some more rain. Uh, man, it's not looking good at all. I do not like this weather model. It shows nothing for California. No, December is one of our wetter months out here, and this is looking like not good. Not good at all. Hopefully that changes. The Pacific Northwest looking good, but for California, we're looking pretty dry out there. For December, that is not good news so hopefully that changes here but anyway folks enjoy your monday not a whole lot going on right now as far as big earthquake activity but you should keep an eye there on california the cascadia subduction zone definitely got uh, some interesting activity stirring up around the bay area recently so i still think we're going to see some movement out there uh, with this new earthquake swarm that stirred up there last night outside of santa rosa definitely uh, the pressure is still going on have a good one. We'll see you guys out here later for the Monday night update. Take care, folks. Stay safe.